Then the next the legend Me plot continuity. <laughs> continuity. <laughs> continuity. <laughs> Alright, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Improvatory, the podcast that tells stories through improv. It's November, so it's gobble gobble season. No, not November. <laughs> sure, that too. Alright, this week we will be telling the story of the legendary Low Gobble. Mm. Now you might have heard this story, it's been often told as a bedtime story to children or, you know, the, the elderly in, in old people homes. They like this story too. So it all began once upon a time, the first Thanksgiving, when the native Europeans came to America and met the colonist Americans. Now, the native Europeans, they didn't know how to do a lot of things. They didn't know how to hunt for food in these new lands. <laughs> they didn't know how to build a house. <laughs> uh, they didn't know how to build houses. Did they know that bacon, egg, and cheese on the roll was one word? Yeah. A lot of, it was no time. Now, besides all those things, they did know one thing. They knew how to eat turkey. Mm-hmm. Now, the native Europeans came in contact with the colonist Americans. And the colonist Americans had been living on those lands that they arrived on for centuries, but they had, no, they had built no major civilizations. They lived a much different lifestyle than the Europeans were used to. Uh, despite their differences, they managed to forge a temporary alliance during the cold season because that season was hunting time with Little Gobble. Now, you might think that this meant that they would be out to hunt Little Gobble, but in reality, this was the time that they hid in fear from the terrible things that Little Gobble would do to them. He's like a nightmare story. The one person around think November time for the whole full month, like literally once they finally had known how to build houses, or they actually just ended up being teepees and cloths from like, you know, the homeland. So every time at midnight, they would make sure that their doors are shut, closed, locked, candles are off, and nobody's out. Not even the dog, not even the goat, because Little Gobble comes out at full moon. So the myth goes that you lock up your doors, you board everything up, and you keep one item in the household that prevents Little Gobble. It's like his kryptonite. So Superman has his kryptonite, everything like that. And Little Gobble, Little Gobble, kryptonite is gravy. And mayonnaise for some reason. You put that shit on everything. Yes. Remember, these are old people, elderly people, you know, their old wicked ways are a thing of the past and they have to get up the news, so I think mayonnaise still works. So they board up their windows, they close everything, and they smear little drops of mayonnaise on the couch, on the door, on the door, and lights on the little shaft of the window, and everywhere in between. It just smells like the subway down the street. So the night goes on, and there's a lot of cues for them when they know when Little Gobbler is either around them or very close to them. They hear a little... and an occasional... So everyone just sits in fear that night, hoping, you know, they wouldn't be this year's victim, or this year's annual news story of the one unfortunate family that got swept up by the Little Gobbler. So as all the couples shut down their lights, they turn off their lights and they go to sleep, the night begins. However, then came the Johnson family. They, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, they believed they had everything prepared. Mayonnaise, some doorknobs, mayonnaise all over the house. Gravy. Gravy all over the walls. Just to make sure little gobbles wouldn't invade. But the dumbass son, little Tim, was stuck outside. Stuck outside. Hungry. So we started eating the mayonnaise and the gravy off the wall. Didn't realize that right behind me was Mr. Gobbles. <laughs> the parents heard from inside their house. At that moment, crackling thunder. And a big storm had arrived. 
They could hear the wind howling outside, the lantern smacking against the house in the strong winds. Mama! Papa! Help! They heard from the door, but it was too late. They knew little Timmy was gone. They had heard him getting eaten. What was this at their door? Calling for help, demanding to let them in. That wasn't little Timmy anymore. So the mom and the dad, they literally had just a hidden fear. They didn't like, they were afraid to open the door because the mayonnaise was no longer on the door to protect them. <laughs> So they just hear what is presumed to be their son being eaten by a little gobble outside their door. So then they decide to hide and hold on to each other and brace until the next morning. So then morning comes and they go outside and there's nothing. Nothing there, no sign of trace of like any whereabouts of little Timmy, but there's a gravy trail. So. All the townspeople, they come about and they're looking and they're wondering like, what happened? And then they're like, oh, uh, our, our son Timmy, oh, poor Timmy, poor Timmy, he's been taken away. He's gone, he's gone, he's no longer here. And so everybody is just like, they, they need to lock down more. They need to make sure that nobody is around like outside for the next night because the night will be coming. But then, all we hear within the crowd is saying, no need to fear. So then they all looked. And we see this bounty hunter looking guy saying he's from Canada. And they're like, they have no idea where this foreign land is. And he said that he's heard about the legend of Will Gobble. And he's willing to hunt and capture him. Alright, so nighttime comes. And bounty hunter had set up traps, little gobble traps. He set up little baits with stuffing and mashed potatoes outside. Now he knew that unlike gravy and mayonnaise, little gobble would be unable to resist these. And he figured if he set up the baits, he'd be able to track little gobble opposed to being hunted by him. So he goes inside the Johnson's family house with him and he waits for night. Now about 1 a.m., Hears that outside a little rustling and some clawing at what he figured was the traps. And he goes to the window and he, he walks over. And as he tries to peek his head out, the Johnson family and the bounty hunter are all here. Mom, Dad, it's Timmy, help! They look at each other frightened. They knew that that could not be Timmy. How could it be Timmy? Timmy was gone. But they can't risk it anymore. The mom, the mom wanted to see her child one more time. She opens the door and storms out into the night. As Mrs. Johnson is running outside, she hears the knock. And it's little Timmy. She walks over to little Timmy. He's shivering. He's frightened. But he looks extremely pale. But something, something seems off, but it's not time for that. It's time for a mom to save her son. She grabs little Timmy by the hand, and she starts sprinting with him back to the house, back to safety, towards the gravy and the mayonnaise. As they're running, they, they hear the storm picking up, and the rain is getting harder. From behind her, she hears a little, little squeal. So she runs in, they make it back to the house, and they slam the door shut and lather it with more mayonnaise and gravy. They need to make sure that they're protected for the night. Husband, look! Look! It's a little Timmy! Oh, my boy! Oh, Timmy, my boy! Come over here, my boy! The bounty hunter from the land of Canada. <laughs> and then he's basically trying to deny the fact that, that it is little Timmy, but obviously the parents don't believe it because they feel, feel as if Tim, little Timmy that is right there is alive and he's right there. He survived the night from before. They feared that he was lost, but now he is here and found. But the bounty hunter is like, no. Co uh, prepares his weapon and then aims it at <laughs> at little Timmy. He's like, I don't believe it, it's him. How can that be Timmy? <laughs> it's impossible. Look at him. He's as pale as a turkey. And then Timmy just starts to twitch. <laughs> like how a turkey twitches. Starts bobbing his head side to side. And then faster. And then faster. And then... 
the mother is just there holding him, just confusedly, like, what's going on? And he's just twitching and twitching and twitching, and then he just looks right at the mom, and then, right then, BAM! Right at the neck. And she just falls to the ground, and she's just like, she's like, choking in her own blood. And then, everybody, uh, the bounty hunter and the father back up, and it's just like, yo, what the hell? And the bounty hunter's like, I told you, it's a little goblin. And then he aims at the, uh, the weapon at little goblin, and then tries to fire the weapon. Right then, the candles blow out, and the goblin's not there. He's not in sight. They strike a match and light the closest candle. They look around, but Timmy's gone. And so is the mom. All that's left is a streak of blood and some feathers. Terrified. The father is in shock and he doesn't know what to do. He's lost his, his child and his wife all in the matter of minutes. The bounty hunter takes charge. He loads up his, his guns and grabs his lasso and he goes outside, prepared to face the little goblin. Bounty hunter, he's looking around for the little goblin. Looking, he's looking, but the storm is basically messing up with his eyesight. Like, you know, with heavy rain, you know, that type of thing. And then, and then afterwards, he starts looking around. And he starts aiming. He starts shooting angrily because obviously this is not an really experienced, experienced bounty hunter. So he's like a year into like his career. He's looking around. And he's like wondering, like, where is he? And he starts shooting. He starts shooting. And he's questioning. Obviously, aimlessly shooting, and then all you hear is behind him, and then he turns around, and it's the turkey himself, and he just starts aiming, but he runs out of ammo, and then luckily though, the bounty hunter, even though he's not experienced, he decided he had set up traps just in case if little novel was going to come through the woods, so. But the thing he didn't know was one of the bear traps was right behind him, and he stepped out. Now, this was little goblin in his true form. He was no longer a part of the mist that had him to the size of a large. <laughs> Humongous. <laughs> he irradiated fear and terror. The bounty hunter. The bounty hunter was so scared. He didn't know what to do. His leg caught in the bear trap. He started to panic. He dropped his guns. His palms were sweaty. He's weak. Arm, arms weren't ready. As little guys will do. Slammed his peck down into the bounty hunter's other leg and pinned him to the ground with his massive claw. He grabbed onto it, the bounty hunter's arm and tore it off. And then afterwards, the bounty hunter he starts screaming and screaming and he's like, ah, ah, and you know, like you know how the pain feels when you lose an arm. And so right before a uh, little gobble could finish him off, he manages. To the knife that he has on, on him, and then he stabs, and then he freaks out and he starts wailing. And then he tries to get him to try to get himself free. And what he does is he pries open the bear trap with literally just his one, his one arm. <laughs> and his foot. So it was kind of tough. <laughs> it was really hard. <laughs> and then he start and then he starts crawling back. He starts crawling back. And the 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 little gobble, he's no longer there, huh? but you hear the wails of him in pain and agony in the woods. And the bounty hunter and he uh, manages to get himself up, and he starts looking around, wondering where uh, where little goblin went. He starts shooting, and he's like, you know that type of thing. And 
right when uh, stuff um, starts to get intense with the storm, then the storm starts to let up more, and then he starts to see more, and he notices that nothing is really around, and Lil Gobble had disappeared. And so he goes back to the town, wounded, bleeding out, and he manages to reach the town, and the townspeople come out, and they see him on the uh on the on the steeple in the, in the center of the town and everybody's like wondering what's going on what's going on and he tells the townspeople that little gobble shouldn't be messing with you for the time being but he might return and before he uh before he uh he dies he hand, he reaches out his arm his only arm with a drawing since nobody has ever seen what Little Gobble looks like, they only speculated. So they pull, <laughs> they pull. He pulls up a drawing, the best he could do, <laughs> of Little Gobble. Before he, before he dies, the town people are concerned over the bounty hunter. They're like, why, why, why were you out there? Why were you out there in the woods in that abandoned cabin all night? Why, why were you hunting Little Gobble by yourself? And he's like, I, I was doing it to get the Johnsons' family boy Timmy back. And to help the, the Johnson mom and dad, they, the townspeople all look at him confused. And they say, the Johnson's family's been dead for 10 years. And then he looks up at the sky and bleeds out. Everybody decides to just leave him there. And then, and as he bleeds out, he hears a faint in the distance. And then afterwards, everybody for the next several centuries after continue as a tradition to smear mayonnaise and gravy on top of their houses. <laughs> and to kill as many turkeys as possible. To make sure that Little Gobble is not reincarnated ever again. And never returns. That's how Thanksgiving was crazy. Yes. <laughs> 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 Ha, 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 ha.